Hi guys, welcome to the Lara Studios. In this session, we're going to be talking about share preferences and how to uh, set it up in a login interface. If you have a relatively small collection of key values that you would like to save, you should use Shared Preferences API. A Shared Preferences object points to a file containing the key value pairs and provides simple methods to read and write them. Each Shared Preferences file is managed by the framework and can be private or shared. We're actually going to be using the shared preferences uh, to save uh, users' persistence uh, when uh, user login into an application. In this uh, application, which we have the Android login and register with SQLite database, uh, we're going to be uh, using shared preference to save the email and password so that user won't have to log in anytime they're accessing the application one more time after they might have logged with their credentials. I'll be added straight to Android Studio. You could find the video from this link as you can see, and I'll still be sharing the source code uh, after I might have committed uh, the changes which I'll be showing you on how to do. Right then, Android Studio, uh, the logic is where you actually get the shared preferences uh, melted on. Uh, you don't need to interact with the layout. You don't need to even uh, manipulate any of the menu or value, value folders. You add straight to the Java classes, and uh, right there in the package, com.delaraystudios.sqlite login, you have the activities, uh, which handle the activities you needed, uh, the login, the register, the forgot password, and the main activity, the helper, uh, which is actually a validation, uh, which validates your data before you actually log in into the application, the model, when we talk about the user apology, the set and get of the user, the SQL is where you have the database helper that saves to the SQLite database, and the ETUs, this is the new uh, package that you'll be creating in this application. You have the constants and the preference utilities. You're actually, actually separating the logic so that uh, these preference utilities could be reusable in the course of actually using shared preference in your application. Start from the constants. You are having shared preference come in key value pairs uh, when you're trying to save just uh, a string. Uh, but when you're trying to save complex data, I will employ you to use uh, either SQLite database or you use uh, the cloud services uh, where you could actually uh, save in external database or you could save to file. So that's, those are the different ways where you can actually have a uh, persistent save of data in an Android application. Now in shared preferences, we're going to set up the keys. The keys that we needed here is the key email and password. You may not really need to save a password right there in the device, but you would like to save the username, probably the email, probably the address, probably the phone number, or some other metadata of your phone. We have the key email, which is uh, pointing at the email string, the key password, also pointing at the password string. Those are constants, which are anytime you need to change, you come over here or to add or to delete or to do any other modification, you get that done right there in the constants. The preference utilities, this could be an interface and it could also be a class, uh, which will actually do two things, save and read. So while saving the email, you have the boolean, it's going to return either true or false. The boolean takes two parameters, the email and the context. The reason why the context here is when you call in the get default shared preferences to the shared, to the preference manager. Uh, this is like instantiating the class or act the activity that is actually pointing down at the shared preferences uh, library. Now you have the shared preferences here, the object prefs, which will interact with the edit, which is the editor of the shared preferences. Uh, you point at the get default shared preferences are uh, very important. You pass in the context uh, right there, and uh, you have an object of the editor called the preps editor. This is where you could actually pull to string, you could pull to int, you could put boolean, you could also put long, put string, int, boolean. Those are the three uh, data type you could interact with when dealing with shared preferences. And you are going to put to string the key and the value which will be passed in from any class, any fragment, anywhere that you might be calling the save email. The same thing goes for the save password. Are uh, you trying to uh, call the key, save the user ID or the password, any any name you feel like you could call this a password for naming purpose, password, and you could also leave it as it is. Now, you, you don't save alone. You Sometimes you need to get to retrieve if there's a value saved as in the key. Now for you to retrieve the email, you call the get email, that's a string data type. If it's an integer, you put an int before it's a boolean, you put a boolean. Now you still point at the shared preferences, calling the get the fourth shared preferences 
on the preference manager passing the context and now you get a string which is the key and the value it's null by default but uh, if there's value this null would definitely change to a value uh, which the key is attached to you have that uh, set up right there so after this uh, we'll be added straight to the activities where we're going to actually save to shared preferences in the login activity that's where we're going to extract data from so right there in the login activity you add straight uh, to the point where you're going to save data to the SQLite database after a successful login so you have that from the verify from SQLite uh, method where you get to call the validation on the email and password to know if uh, the uh, value passed are actually correct uh, at the point of checking the user email and password uh, you could be satisfied that uh, if this return true that's going to actually uh, get that logged in uh, into uh, the the SQLite database so what you're going to do is this uh, you're going to call the preference utils class and point at the save email method which is right inside this class and you pass in the key to the email which is going to be the value uh, after the correct validation you pass in the email and the context at this point will be this because you are in an activity if you are in a fragment you're going to pass the get context uh, you do the same thing for the password uh, based on what you are saving to the shared preference what you're going to do is first of all create a method to get the value saved uh, to the shared pre preference usually the editor to commit down to the shared preference and at the point of uh, creating you call the save and when you're getting you call the get so that's just it now you're saving at this point you pass in the password and the context as well so you could actually uh, point at uh, the intent to the user's activity after a successful login you call on finish to finish off this process so you'll be able to go back to the previous uh, calling activity or fragment cool after this you head straight to the user's activity in the user's activity before we actually go straight to the user's activity we need to check for precedence in the onCreate method well you are uh, right there let's get to look at you have the initializing views uh, where you get to initialize the views used the nested scroll view the app compact button login the text view the the text view for the password and email uh, you need to test for this uh, statement if the get email now calling the preference utilities if it's not equals to null or this point here if the preference utility get email is not empty so you want to know I have I have something be saved into the shared preference as the email be saved not just something as the email be saved if it's not null or is not empty so at this point in time you know that something has been saved it's going to point to the user activity if not stay down in the login activity so that's just the uh, gimmick to actually get shared preference to keep on uh, the state of the login of a user so with this now you'll be sure if the user have logged in before is actually going to point down to user activity because you're not testing the value of the shared preferences if it's null or if it's empty so it should either be of the two now in the user's activity are you going to do it uh, you're actually passing an intent don't forget from the login activity to the user's activity to get the email so you could actually test this if the intent has an extra of an email that is if uh, the intent uh, actually has an email as an extra as I said you're going to actually extract this using the get string extra and pass that to a string from there you could use that to display to a text view else if it doesn't you're gonna look at the shared preference if there's a value for the shared preference so you still need to undo that which is the get email if there's a value you pass that to the email string and you set that to the same welcome so it's just two ways so that you're not going to have a null pointer exception in this process so you test for the intent if it has the necessary uh, key and if the intent has it is going to move further just uh, neglect the other statement but if the intent doesn't it's going to go straight to the else probably there is a value saved in the shared preference based on what you needed it for so if that so you could actually have this setup I actually created a logout uh, few too right there in the menu you have that in the menu package uh, folder right there the main.xml so you should know how to create the menu at this point in time you create an item 
Just point at the ID, the title, and show as action level so that you're going to have the overflow menu right at the uh, top right corner to have your logout. So with this, you could have the logout to log out of the application. Now, right there in the user's activity, you need to override two methods on create options menu and on options item selected. In the on create options menu, that's where you get to inflate the main uh, XML. And on option item selected, you get to point into the main XML, calling the item's ID and use them appropriately because on click of it, you will do something. On click of the logout, what you're going to do, you call on the shared preference as well. Call it the preference utilities. You're saving to the password, empty fields. So this is what you're going to do. So now you are, you are, you are trying to flush out what you've said to the shared preference at the point of logout. That is very, very important. At the point of logout in any of your application, empty all shared preferences that you've used so that if a user is trying to log in with another credential in the same application, the shared preference won't be worth, won't have a value. So that's just the essence of that. Once the user logs out, that means it's clear. You're good. You have to clear out all shared preferences in any application that you're creating in Ado. Save password, enter the shared preference uh, value of the password, pass it the, the this context, and in the same email, pass an empty field as well to this so that anytime you're trying to log out it's going to notice that this is empty or not so it's actually going to point you to a login activity i think that's the gimmick so that's cool so with that you've actually completed how to integrate shared preferences in any of your application just create a preference with this class point your save and, uh, and get based on the preference uh, string that you're actually pointing at and with that you could call in any of your activity or fragment the use of shared preferences it's very very efficient when you're calling little little key value pairs which are actually going to make or complement the user of the application this is when you call on user experience so that user could actually enjoy using the application so with all said and done uh, we've actually completed shared preferences in any login activity you could actually use it even if you're logging in to a server or calling or pointing at uh, a login credentials to a server probably using retrofit or volley or any library or whatsoever which you're actually using you also still need share preference to save the user persistency right there when they are logging in into your application. So thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout this video. I'll be uploading or committing the source code to the branch which we have and I'll implore you to check out that link right there in the video which I'll be sharing in the description of this video and at the same time I would like you to subscribe to this channel if you've not done this and put on the notifications so that you get instant inf information, instant feedback anytime I upload my videos right there on this channel and at the same time we implore you to leave comments whatsoever any video or any tutorial that you actually want me to cover and uh, which you really want me to shed light on you could leave any comments right there in the comment section ask questions I'll be right there to answer any of your programming questions when it comes to Android program so thank you guys one more time and have a pleasant time I'll say happy Easter and stay blessed